thank you gentlemen for being here. And I want to just go through and introduce everybody. Right here is Commander Dan Kenny, who is the Executive Officer of Coast Guard's Helicopter Interdiction Tactical Squadron Jacksonville, or HITRON. Jacksonville, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, I'm only going to say Hitron from now on out. That's, that's so. completely fine. That's okay. how we go by. Well, welcome, Commander. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. And then next to him is Mr. Matt Eaton, who is the VP of Corporate Development for Flight Star Aircraft Services. Welcome, Matt. Hi, Debbie. Thanks. And you're a returning guest, so yes, this should be a breeze for you, right? <laughs> you bet. Okay. <laughs> and then once again, Rusty Chandler, who is the manager, airport manager of Cecil Field. Welcome back, Rusty. Thank you, Doug. Well, we talked about Cecil Field, its role in the airport system and things like that, and you guys live there and work out there. So, Commander, starting with you, please tell us a little bit about your mission out at Cecil Field and why Cecil Field and, and things like that. Well, the U.S. Coast Guard came to Cecil Field back in 99 when we were trying to develop a concept of operations to interdict drug smuggling vessels and using airborne use of force to do that. So way back in 99, uh, after the airfield uh, had transitioned, uh, the Coast Guard looked at leasing facilities and we leased Hangar 13 that Rusty talked about in the first segment and established operations. It started out with just 10 folks originally in, in two leased aircraft. Um, and then shortly after that, after, after some initial uh, really good success, we had interdicted about three or four boats, uh, about 5,000 tons of cocaine and about, and about a three-week period down in the Caribbean, the Coast Guard obviously decided to expand that mission and brought in an additional, additional folks and, uh, and, and leased helicopters. So we ended up moving to eight leased helicopters from Augusta Aerospace Corporation in 2001 and uh, had 76 people there from 2001 to 2000, 2007, actually. Uh, then the Coast Guard at that point decided to move back into our organic aircraft, which is the Coast Guard HH-65 Dolphin, and brought in Coast Guard uh, an additional Coast Guard contingent of personnel. So now we're up to 230 personnel, wow. 10 aircraft, and we primarily just do drug, drug interdiction operations throughout the Caribbean, Eastern Pacific Oceans. Um, and we deploy with Coast Guard cutters going out there. So personnel train at Cecil Field, home base out of Cecil Field. Um, it's a great airport. The facilities that Rusty talked about uh, with the runways and the, and the environment is perfect. We do obviously a lot of, a lot of uh, gunnery exercises. So. The offshore warning areas are very close. We use the, we use the St. John's River between, primarily between the Buckman and Shands Bridge to do tactics training out there and also utilize Camp Landing, which is just a, a short flight to the south for the gunnery exercise there. So as far as a, a facility, in addition to just the Jacksonville area, uh, the facility is just exceptional and, and very close to a lot of the training areas that we use. So it is a very good tactical location for the Coast Guard to to do this drug interdiction mission? Yes, because most, most of the cutters that deploy to the south with Mayport being so close, a lot of our Coast Guard cutters come through Mayport, um, so it, it's a very easy hop-on point for us to, to jump onto the back of the cutters, transit into the area. Um, in the Eastern Pacific, we, we airlift our aircraft out to the Eastern Pacific and, uh, and embark cutters um, uh, down in theater uh, through, that, through that venue, but uh, in general, Cecil is, is, a, is a very good location overall between, like I said, the Coast Guard cutters that come through in addition to, to the airport facilities and, and, and local surrounding areas. Well, you mentioned the amount of cocaine you were able to seize just within a short period of time when you first started your operations there. What are you up to now? Right now, we, we just had uh, an interdiction about two to three days ago, so we've had 162 interdictions since the, uh, since we've come to, since the, actually since the unit stood up. Um, and interdicted a little over 170 tons of cocaine, valued at about $9.3 billion with a B. So uh, we've had quite a bit of success and we've done a lot of facility expansion uh, at Cecil uh, with, with both Hangar 13 and, and, uh, and Building 1846, which uh, houses most of our command and logistics personnel over there. So uh, obviously to, to bring in those additional aircraft and personnel, uh, we've done a lot of, lot of, it, lot of facility expansion. Um, and it's worked out really, 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 really well. Now, the one building that you mentioned, 1846. Yes. Did that used to? What did that used to be? It used to be a similar building for the Navy. The Navy. The simulator. Used, oh. Okay. Yeah, and it was built specifically for that, so it's kind of an odd building. Right. Okay. So you were able to reuse that, of course, making some. Yeah, it adjustments. Actually work, yeah, it works out really, really well because yeah. half of the build, or two thirds of the building, is is primarily was office space. And probably a third was a, uh, a large um, uh, area where they used to house the simulators actually in those. But we have tactical training boats 
uh, that we use regularly uh, in the St. Johns River uh, to, to practice. They, they simulate being go fast boats and we chase them in the helicopter so a lot of folks may see us out there on the river doing that and uh, that facility or that, uh, that large boat bay area makes a great spot to, to house those boats and, and to do that type of industrial stuff that we do that isn't exactly related to uh, the hangar and, or need to be in the hangar where the aircraft are at. Right. Well, that's really interesting and how exciting that, that you've grown significantly since you first started operations out here. Yeah, it's, it's been exceptional. Like I said, uh, Jay has been great partners for us and, uh, and, and really worked, we've worked hand in hand, Rusty and I, on a, on a lot of facility projects. It's, I think we're about in the, the, I think the fourth phase now fourth and a uh, couple, of, couple of sub phases there also, but uh, a lot of phases and hopefully, I think uh, we're shooting for, um, I think the beginning of, of 2009 to kind of be done with the last major facility mm -hmm. upgrades that we're doing. But uh, uh, yeah, it's been an exciting time and, and, and uh, we're really up to full complement with both aircraft and, and people at this point, just catching up the last little bit of facilities. Well, that's, that's really exciting, and I'm so glad that it's working out for yeah, you. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> now, Matt, you guys don't go out and catch drug runners, so what is it that you <coughs> do out at Well, Cecil we try Field? not to have that much excitement <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what we do is we work on uh, airliners. Mm -hmm. We're what we call an MRO, or Maintenance Repair Organization. We do heavy maintenance and conversion on airlines. Uh, the, what we do is the, the airlines themselves, they have phased or, or uh, progressive maintenance programs so that every uh, so often, whether it's 12 months or 18 months, they do a heavy maintenance check inspection on different areas of the airplane so that once they've completed the cycle, the entire airplane's been inspected and everything you know, brought up to the latest revisions on all the information. On the cargo conversion side, we're the only facility in the world right now that's performing the one uh, precision conversions uh, uh, modification to the airplane. And we take airplanes from around the world <coughs> and we convert them from passenger airplanes into uh, freighters. And that involves completely gutting the airplane, uh, cutting a great big huge hole in the side, taking a lot of the skin off, restructuring everything, removing the two rear doors, installing a new cargo handling system, mm -hmm. uh, and then rerouting most of the environmental and electrical systems within your airplane. And taping up all the passenger windows. Well, actually yeah. they're replaced, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah with plugs. Yeah. I had no idea you were the only facility doing this type of thing in the world. The only one that's doing it on the 757 okay. with this particular conversion. Wow. There's one other uh, company that's doing a, a different type of conversion on the 75. It's a, a lot less capable conversion. Mm -hmm. Right now we have an airplane in from China. Hopefully it's the first of 10 for these people. We've dispatched airplanes to Russia, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Central and South America, Taiwan, just you know, we've gone global since we've moved to Cecil. Right. So how long have you been at Cecil? Because you didn't start out your operations We there started initially. out, this is our 10th year. We started off in January of 2000 at JIA. Mm -hmm. And by 2001, it was clear that we needed to grow and expand. And Jerry was on a trip looking out there one time uh, with the developers. And we found the existing hangar was going to work for us much better than a new facility economically. Uh, we worked with JIA. I think it was actually our executive assistant found information on a grant. Mm -hmm. uh, I pursued that a little bit, brought it to JA's attention, and they went after the grant, so we partnered up on a new facility there. When we came to Jacksonville, it was with four people uh, to start the company. When we moved over to Cecil, it was about 250. Last summer at our peak, we were parking 600 people a day there. Wow. And now with our uh, new expansion plans, uh, we'll be bringing another 200 jobs within a year to Cecil. What a wonderful segue, because <laughs> what expansion are you talking And we have a drawing of this particular hangar. If we could get just a quick look at this. What is this, and what, what is that going to do well, for Well, you talked Cecil? earlier about uh, Florida State College of Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. I got it right the first time. Right. <laughs> um, and JAA have teamed up to build a aircraft coding and MRO training facility, and, and it's also going to be a working business. Mm -hmm. And Flystar was selected through a competition to be the operator of this facility. Right. So what that will give us as a company that we don't have now will give us dedicated strip and paint facilities, which we don't have, and give us two additional maintenance bays. And then we will incorporate some of the training and the curriculum with FSCJ as well as we, as we go on that way. 
Now, so what size, I see, because I'm terrible, okay. I work for the Aviation Authority, but I don't know one plane from okay. another. What size aircraft will this the hangar be able to? The largest it will take in the paint bay will be a se Boeing 767, 767, which is a, okay. a wide body airplane. Okay. And then the other two will take up to a Boeing 757. Okay. And then there's classroom facilities and classroom, things? Classroom, laboratory, and uh, there'll be internships available. And uh, the actual interface with FSCJ and uh, Flight Star still, we're still working it out, but we had a, pr a meeting uh, last week and it's working very well. We're on track. Right, and the actual groundbreaking is taking place on the 10th anniversary mm -hmm. month right. of Cecil Field. So it's a real indication of how Cecil is growing and mm -hmm. expanding. Now, this facility, a facility of this type, mm -hmm. where is another comparable facility? Probably they're the closest state-of-the-art painting facility like that would probably be uh, either Dallas or Mobile. So do you There's anticipate that, uh, since you're going to be the operator, right. do you anticipate that this is going to be a facility in high demand for the services that they'll provide? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It already is, and with the changing nature and the complexion of the airline industry, uh, in addition to what we ser currently have as a business base, we anticipate bringing additional business from more of the legacy carriers as they switch brands and owners and, and uh, affiliations. It's becoming a one-stop shop at Cecil. Mm -hmm. You can have the type of maintenance and things that, that, that you do mm -hmm. at Flightstar, mm -hmm. and then you have the ability to do a complete paint job right in one that's location. Uh -huh. So, well, that's really exciting. So, uh, when do you hope to have the facility up and running? By the end of next year. Is that really? yeah. uh, end of next year. Okay. Hopefully Very a little good. sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that would be even nicer. And you said you would employ approximately another how two, many 200 people? people. Two hundred mm -hmm. people. So, people so that need will give us up to bring us up to about eight hundred jobs. Eight hundred associated with Flight Star there. Fl with the Flight Star mm -hmm. and with this mm -hmm. here. So those types of jobs, if somebody is looking to sort of take the time now to get their skills mm -hmm. up to speed, what kind of skills should they have? They should have uh, either their A and P license. Okay. which is airframe and power plant, uh, the mechanical portion of it, and then they should have uh, some special attention on the structural side uh, okay. of doing that. A lot of our work, especially with the conversions, has to do with the structural uh, portions of the aircraft and uh, the sheet metal work, if you, like, like a body shop of an of a automobile, only a lot more high-tech. Okay, perfect. Well, we are out of time, believe it or not, so I want to just briefly thank Commander Kenny with the U.S. Coast Guard Hitron Jacksonville, yes, Matt Eaton, VP Market Corporate Development at Flight Star Aircraft Services, and of course Rusty Chandler, Cecil Field Airport Manager. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us on this edition of the Airport News Show. We'll see you next time. to yourself.